the first gentleman uh, who is about to speak about how Playtech started up and uh, what it means to have a startup. So, um, Rein Lemberbu has been in the IT sector for uh, many, many years, and right now he's, uh, he's the heart of uh, raising the IT community and startup community in uh, Tartu, uh, being a role of the one part of Garage 48 hub, and uh, also uh, starting up a new company. What is it about, and uh, what's the experience with uh, startups? Let's make a round of applause to Ray Lemberbu. Okay, thank you very much, and um, it's very interesting to be back in Playtech after so many years. It's, uh, it's a strange thing that when you move on in the life, you tend to somehow forget what you have been actually doing. And uh, I was in Playtech eight years, which is actually quite a lot of time and energy. <laughs> which uh, it's good to see that uh, the seeds that we planted back then are uh, growing, and it's still growing. So um, today I'm a little bit um, comparing what's the uh, experience back in the Playtech uh, days, and, and if you want to start something new today, so what's the What's the challenge? Okay, first, uh, maybe a little bit to touch what is a startup because it's uh, kind of everyone uses it in their own way. <laughs> how, do you, how do you actually define something as a startup? Because uh, when back in the beginning of late, we didn't use such a word as a startup and we actually didn't think. In, in that way. But what makes a, a company different from any other company that is start, started and makes it a startup is the fact that uh, you are actually venturing into the unknown, meaning that you don't really know what will be the business model or what, where the money will actually will come to, to the company. You don't really know how you are going to solve and even what you are going to solve. And you don't know uh, who you need in the team and who you will get in the team. So it's, uh, you're pretty much in the unknown territory, which means that it's a great adventure, obviously. And this is, I think, the most challenging way to start any new uh, venture, meaning any new company. Um, something that makes also startup different is the fact that it is intended that it will be able to scale. If you open up any other type of businesses and you don't specifically keep that part in mind, then it's more likely that it's really difficult to scale up and to be global and uh, in that way um, conquer the world. Um, okay. So, a good question. Was Plata a startup or not? Um, these are my slides. So I just draw it yesterday. So uh, just to also show what is the difference between already fully established company and a startup. Meaning the startup, you need to do everything. I'm also doing the one startup in addition to other stuff. And there you need to play all the roles. Meaning that you need to draw. <laughs> you need to speak, you need to invent, you need to do everything. And when we started with Playtech, I, I think it was mainly the same, same energy that you didn't think that, okay, this is my role and this is my responsibility and, you know, I can't do this and that. There was actually no rules. There was uh, everything, everyone just put their effort wherever they wanted or felt it's needed and when, when they could actually contribute. So I was, uh, when I joined um, Playtech, I was uh, coding. And I was also doing um, customer support, which means that it's kind of 24-7 uh, job. I remember having some calls at midnight. Someone from support called that there is some bug in the system. And uh, now we need to fix it. So I was dictating through the phone, the SQL, to make some queries and to understand what's wrong with the data and to fix it, then go back to sleep. But this is where very exciting thing actually to do. 
So in the terms of um, the attitude, I'm pretty sure uh, Blade Tech qualified as what, what today has been called a startup. And obviously because of the ability to scale. So what's hap happening with startups in Estonia at these days? The last Compass report said that we have around 500, 700 startups uh, in, in Estonia, which is actually almost unbelievable because, let's say, in comparison, let's say, in Tel Aviv, there is around 900, which makes it very close. And we have much less uh, people and population in Estonia. So this is, there is something definitely going on in this uh, area in Estonia. And the total valuation of all startups is quarter of... This is Estonia, a land of... I think one of the uh, reasons that we see so many startups today is that Estonia was lucky enough to obviously have a lot of support from the government side, uh, having this uh, strategy of focusing on IT and, and so on, but also that we really had some few big players that started up 15 years ago, meaning Playtech, meaning Skype, and also Nortal, uh, although it's not a startup, never has been, but still bringing this knowledge and also uh, from uh, people that are today leaving or, you know, exiting those, uh, I would say, first round of Estonian startups, uh, they are actually creating new ones. They have a lot of skills, they have uh, resources and so on. So this is actually what happens when you will have some successful success stories in, in one small country. So what's the difference today? Uh, I think in uh, when we did start Playtech, it was uh, somewhat. There are there are actually three three main challenges, and I will go um, through them uh, one by one, and maybe also bring some uh, some interesting things that uh, we did in the Playtech and comparing it's what's happening today is that and um, but the main difference is that uh, since as you see from the numbers as well the uh, uh, the battle is much more fierce actually I took a break after uh, 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 coming uh, from uh, Playtech for the family and so on. And then when I came back, I thought, okay, let's make some startups. This is easy. We have done. <laughs> and what happened during these four, four or five years, actually the scene has changed quite a lot. And, uh, and the approach you can take, this is, this is even more uh, crazy than before because there are so fierce competition. You can, you, you know, even coming up with the idea, okay, what you will do, you will, Google and then you write, okay, there's 20 already there. So <laughs> this wasn't uh, the, uh, the same 15 years ago. You came up with an idea that maybe there was someone doing this or maybe not. So this makes a huge difference. Uh, so what's the challenges? First of all, uh, this is the teeth. I'm just thinking how to visualize pain. <laughs> The first thing that uh, if you want to build a successful startup, you need to identify what's the pain you want to tackle. Obviously, there is uh, another type of startups which are called kind of vitamins. And um, although this seems interesting, this is much harder. To invent the vitamin and to be uh, successful with the vitamin is much harder if you just take one pain and try to leverage, uh, find some ways to tackle this. And uh, this is the first challenge. If you will ever start uh, make a, your own startup, you need to understand what is the actual pain that customers are willing to solve. Here are already two things. You need to first find the pain. And second of all, you need to find the pain that they want to solve because I'm having, I've had a lot of interviews uh, with companies and they have all sorts of pains. And 90% of those pains, they don't want to actually tackle. It's okay, that's you know, not important. 
then uh, out of those 10 percent you still need to find uh, the pain that they want to tackle and they are willing to pay for this reduces it even more 10 times so actually to find something that, that they are willing to pay for uh, this is really difficult and this is a skill there is a lot of, uh, I would say, psychology of understanding what's really going on because all the customers are lying to you. They are saying that the pain is this, but they actually don't even fucking care about this. <laughs> and they, all, they go to all kind of dreamy stuff. Okay, we would like to have things like this and that, but this is the visual thinking. And you need to actually find what's the value, where they can actually get the value. And this is uh, uh, quite challenging. So um, these days we are also in, in Tartu, we are building um, Tartu kind of startup ecosystem. And uh, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of startups who either want to just discuss their ideas or even want, want some funding. Um, this is, I hardly see companies that have actually touched, you know, a real pain. There are some derivatives or something that's okay. But we will do it better than you know the existing things. We will you know invent something on, on, as we go. But this is uh, definitely some. If we, especially when we're talking about Estonia, Estonians are not very outgoing. You know, extroverted people. They don't want to go to actually to the customer. You know, listen. What's what's bothering you? Where we can help you? They just okay. We'll think it out. You know, on our own way, what they need. And comparing to, uh, with the Playtech startup story is that uh, uh, Playtech was very lucky because we actually put together the Israeli mentality and the Estonian mentality. And these are two completely different types of approaches, meaning that uh, Estonians are engineers. They want to think, okay, this is the best way to do things. And then the Israeli guy and goes, no, 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 forget about this, we need that. And this is something which uh, comes actually from the customer. And this, I believe, uh, is one of the um, key factors of late success that the customer, even though we today mentioned that the employees are the number first asset, the, the uh, sales and product market inside of, of, uh, of late always knew that the actual uh, success comes from the customers. If you make the customer happy, then everything else will be also happy because it's in the end of the day who will pay for the service that you need to serve. And being responsible on the, all, all other areas, this is the result, not the cause, actually. So um, this one is really difficult. Obviously, uh, Playtech came through this pain factor pretty easily because um, there was, at that time there was not too many players around and the pain was uh, was very clearly defined already by the market. You didn't need to invent and find much there. So the, it was like for, for there to take. Second big problem is that once you identify this pain, you need to now find a solution, which means building a service, meaning building a product. Usually it's a combination of both. So this is another difficult thing because not every pain can be actually solved. You, you can bring out the solution, but then it appears that in real life it doesn't really work, or you cannot actually charge money for this. This is another problem. Okay, we have a solution, but I'm ready to use it, but for free, because I'm, I don't you know, feel this is worth um, paying for. So this, uh, I think this is the place where today what we call is this customer, uh, driven development, meaning that you need to involve customers a lot into the process. Uh, in Playtech, this has been also um, quite crazy approach in terms of. Um, I remember that um, customers sent us so many requests that at any point in time, when I thought, okay, we'll now freeze this uh, backlog, we'll not take any more requests from the customers just freeze it. We still need an, a year to complete everything that's, that is going. I don't know if it's different today or it's two years already or three, I don't know. Maybe two. <laughs> so this goes even more crazy. Uh, which, this is the problem already, which is the bonus problem. 
and I will touch that soon as well. And the third pain is how you will actually get to the market. This is, this is not engineering. <laughs> This is the most challenging thing for Estonian uh, startup communities. How to actually access the market, how to make the deals, how to get the contacts and so on. And uh, here again, uh, you know, guys like joining us, they know how to do it. So this is, a, I think, in, in terms of uh, skill set, is a win-win combination. It's how you will actually tackle it, how you will make yourself different, how you will barriers for others to enter this is uh, uh, if you start from scratch quite a challenging thing actually to get these first um, customers and uh, here I try to draw the combination of some currency and world and uh, some yin yang stuff <laughs> So to put this all together, this is uh, something that these days, you know, is in Estonia especially, we see that it's not thought of enough. I had a, um, uh, a discussion yesterday with one, one startup that wanted to have some funding, and uh, everything was fine in, until I get to the point, okay, what's your go-to-market strategy? How you are going to actually reach out there? What's, who is taking care of your uh, marketing and activities? And there is not enough skill in Estonia actually in this area, so this is a very difficult one. If you can get someone outside to, that already has the culture of, of uh, going out and getting the sales and having the contacts, this is uh, something that will be a huge benefit. Again, Blade had really good combination here. And also making some, uh, you need to be clever here because Blade kind of actually um, was its own first customers as well. So this is a way you can go around. Nothing else. No. <laughs> it's all about marketing. <laughs> no, there's uh, just one more slide. So, and this is the bonus round. You know, in the <laughs> in the betting world. Okay, there it came. You need to have the bonus round, and this is the scaling. Once you targeted all those three challenges, you you are in a good. This is a good problem to have. Usually, people start to solve this problem before they actually have it. So uh, this, I think, we have been in Plate really excellent, which means that it's getting new people on board, which today is even more difficult than it was back then. But it was difficult uh, even uh, you know, 10 years ago if we needed like 70 new engineers in Tartu. It's almost like impossible to get, but with good, talented, and you know, that, that's where we invented all these uh, fish programs and all kind of uh, going to universities and you, you just whatever came up, you need to use all the tools that, number one is that how you will actually get the team to grow. And this is very difficult. And Plate also tried all kind of different strategies. Uh, I was uh, there to um, also to open up the uh, Bulgarian office and Philippines office, okay, today things are changed a lot. But this is very difficult. It's, it's not, it was quite clear that in Tartu or in, in Estonia, it's not going to be enough to actually scale. And this is, doesn't matter where you actually open up the, or where you start with a startup, in, in the end of the day, you will be global. So you need to have a different offices. And this is only one thing that you also need to invent all the procedures, all the systems, everything, every year. So it's not just, okay, we did it once and now it's done. Okay, the next year you need to double it. So the scaling thing, this is the where actually the management capabilities uh, matter the most. So this is, uh, and in Playtech this has been quite 
for me, this is, has been the most enjoyable process. And this is where I put most of my energy into, and I enjoyed it a lot. And this is an uh, experience you will not get from any school or anywhere. So thank you, Plate, for this opportunity. That's it. Questions? Yes, you can look around the report. Do we have any kind of questions for Raid? So what about the contract? Do you think that this will be scaled up to a point where it's going to be next later? So the question was, since we are online, uh, I would like to repeat the question. So can you repeat it? Yes. Uh, I was asking about Raid's new uh, startup called Contract. Is it something that will scale up to a point where it will be the next plate or at least the same? It's very difficult to say if something is going to be worth four billion uh, in years to come, because I remember we did some uh, uh, thoughts when we were discussing how much to invest into Playtech security. So, what is the you know craziest number you can think of? How much you know the company can be worth? And this we came up a lot came up with one hundred million. <laughs> so, so uh, there was no idea that actually you can add some zeros there. So uh, it's impossible to say. Uh, obviously, Contriber has the audience because it's um, it can be used of most of the companies in, or, or globally. So there is this market that can use it. So in that terms, it can be. Um, what makes it difficult is if you go horizontal, is that you actually need crazy amount of resources to, to reach that market. So um, it's always a question of, of how you making this balance. If you uh, start wide or you target some uh, segment, but the potential is there. Maybe those of uh, those of you who are not aware of Contriber. And also for the online viewers, maybe can you describe this new startup uh, in few words? What does it offer? What's the pain that you're attacking? Mm -hmm. The pain we uh, wanted to attack uh, is the pain of uh, intelligent cooperation, meaning how uh, the most valuable asset in your company is actually working together. And it starts off from the communications and it goes into all kinds of decision-making procedures, brainstorming procedures and so so that's the collaboration tool that we wanted to offer. And it can be used in, it doesn't matter what field the company is working, or is it specifically focused on some kind of sales companies, or, or what? It's uh, focused on uh, companies with, uh, which are uh, knowledge companies, meaning that they are they're knowledge workers, meaning that you don't work you know, with hands and stuff, where you don't actually use computers, you don't need, uh, actually leverage the... Uh, the one plus one equals three effect of, of putting all the brains and you know effort together. Okay. More questions? Maybe about the. Uh, I'm not letting you go. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you're off your way to Tartu, but yes. maybe can you, um, in few words, in your own experience, when talking about startups, uh, maybe I'm stereotyping, but is it that? Most Estonians like to, okay, I can get this on my own, I will do the startup, this is my flagship, this is what I do. What do you see in the numbers? What is the most effective team numbers when you start the startup? Because you have experience with uh, Garage uh, 48, Garage 48. Uh, what is the optimal number? Is there an optimal number? And what are your views on that? Should it be like a solo thing at first and one by one adding or you start right away yes. with a team? Obviously, starting something on your own, this is very difficult because you don't, if you don't have anyone to, you know, bounce ideas, then it's quite difficult. So, uh, but you cannot go crazy. If we're talking about how many founders you need, then I think it's maybe two is kind of ideal. If okay. you have three, four, okay, after that it's crowd. <laughs> so. And uh, also, uh, in terms of how many team players you will have, I think keep it as minimal as possible. 
unless you are targeting a pain that you can, uh, let's say, already make the customers pay for what you will make in that terms. But even then, I, I wouldn't say more than six, seven, eight to start first year or two. So just because you, you need to be very flexible. Every person you add to the team, you are getting more inflexible, meaning you need to make a turnaround. And uh, usually the first product you are coming out is not the product that will be, be the winner, usually. Uh, it doesn't have to be always like this. Plata is an exception in that term. Uh, but uh, usually you need to be very flexible, and this you can do if you are small. Okay. You, you can just uh, throw in some questions if you want to during, during the speaking also. Uh, about investors and about uh, uh, business angels and about funding, what is your view? Because when you look at the history, in the last five years you see a lot of crowdfunding uh, coming up. And uh, what's your view on crowdfunding and do you have experience? And what is your view when you should go to the investors and pitch your stuff as a startup? If that was a good question or... Okay, it's kind of mixed question. Uh, first of all, uh, crowdfunding, I think this is definitely something, uh, a new thing in, in out there. It's not only about funding, it's all, all kind of crowdsourcing, which means that um, what, what the technology has uh, enabled for us is the possibility for uh, smaller players to participate in bigger projects, meaning that this, this, the access is uh, lower, the cost is lower, um, and you can participate in the, in the funding. Um, and this happens, you know, everywhere. And it's um, a part of something if you actually give, let's say, the person is getting more power these days. Usually it used to be big corporations, but now also single person can have a lot of uh, power of deciding what they will do, where they will invest, you know, will they be a taxi driver today or investor tomorrow, they can both, you know, they can do it or even start your own startup. This was not possible uh, decades ago. Uh, in terms of um, funding, you asked uh, when? Yeah, let's say business angels or okay. if, if when they should come along or should they or sh do you prefer crowdfunding or are they to totally different things or what's your... Obviously, crowdfunding uh, adds uh, for the founder a lot of overhead, meaning that instead of having just one investor that you need to have a relationship, you might have too many. So if you don't use some kind of a platform or some kind of system that helps, helps you, that's going to take a lot of resources from you. When to ask money, it's obviously um, really like, depends like what when, it, when you need it. But like the question, where does the most of the money go to? Is it uh, to marketing? Should it be to what's like the emphasis when you have, have met investors? Or where is like the, what they are? Of course, they want to see the ROI, the return on investment. But when do they see that this plan really works? You should put at least half of the investment into sales or... What is like the correlation? Do you understand my question? Like, yeah, what is the yeah, correlation? I understand the, uh, I understand the question, but it's not possible to answer because funding itself is a big topic, and it really depends on what phase your company. Are you like really starting up? Is it the pre-seed funding? Okay. Is it the A series or whatever? You know, this is very different. The money will go very different places. All this, I would say, up to seed, seed plus rounds, ninety percent will actually go to paying salaries. And maybe from uh, series A, B, C, and so you will actually put most of it to marketing. So something like this in general. But it's very specific. It depends if it's actually a hardware uh, startup or it's a software startup. If it's hardware, then there is a lot of cost just for the hardware as well. And developing hardware is a lot, quite expensive, uh, which is a different uh, um, game, actually. So it, it's, there is no single answer. OK. And for a final question? There must be a lot of Estonians. Mm. Yeah, I told you. If you want to have 10 minutes for uh, questions, I should put some extra slides. <laughs> but, but, but last question, Rain, for, uh, for, for youngsters, and, and not only for youngsters, but people who are thinking about making a startup. Uh, Don't do it. <laughs> How long of a days they should 
be ready for? Is it 20 hour day? Is it 15 hour day? 10 hour day? Like, what, what, what's the work behind it? Because we, we see only the, only the stories like, uh, what was the last thing that was sold to Facebook and uh, also made in Ukraine in the Garage 48. And we see the success stories, but what's the work behind it? This is quite crazy. I think uh, it takes everything you have and a little bit more. So, because you don't actually stop thinking, meaning that even, okay, you will go off from the office, but you will st still go meet someone, talk someone, even in the gym, you're still constantly thinking about it. So, it has to be, number one, focus, meaning that, uh, okay, you can have some other things, but they are, uh, cannot have that much of an attention. So, it's not a wise thing if you want to balance your uh, family life and so on. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite challenging.